from my wife, Marcia. Yes. My daughter, Karen Dell. My son in law, Brad Dell. My daughter in law, my son Frank. My sister, Joan Kleinrock. My brother in law, Bud Kleinrock. Of course, no Larry Silverman. Mr. President, how are you? Just fine. I think they want a family picture if we can all. I think we can kind of all get back in this, uh, right in this neighborhood. I think I wind up some of you come over on this side. Why don't you stand here? Come on. Come on. Yeah. If you would. Then you can get as close as you can. Okay. Well, why don't you move a little to your left? Okay. Great. Perfect. Right here. Carlucci, right here. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Mr. President, I was wondering if we had a few seconds, if, if uh, you would help us solve a family problem, which, which resulted when uh, you announced that Frank would be going to defense. Our daughter, Kristen, got very teary-eyed. And when I asked why, she said, but why would Daddy leave the president? <laughs> <laughs> and, yes, and I tried to explain that she, you wouldn't, she wouldn't be, he wouldn't be leaving you. No. He's not leaving. He's, uh, he's just staying with me in a different way. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. Okay, now that's all settled. <laughs> now, as a matter of fact, now he's in charge of one member of your family over there. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> your boss. It's, well, uh, it's the hard way of getting control of him. That's all right. I think I'm going to be mowing the lawn regularly. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Well, no? we're ready. We're going to have the family go in first and take their positions. Okay. And followed by the president yourself, Mrs. Brown, and the judge. Me, we wait. Okay. okay. Just give me a little ground. Judge, you'll be going in. I'll check you by, Frank. <laughs> Your last chance. I told the Cap that we're using the Bible that he gave to Frank when Frank was sworn in to be his deputy. Is that right? I think that's great. Well, I guess here we go. We have, to, Mr. President, we don't have everybody in place yet. It's a little tight in there. Right. Tell them to shape up. <laughs> Okay. Here we go. In order to no, not call the Santa. Give me again. Find out because I've got to let my people know. Sure, just call. I don't know when I'm gonna be in town. I know, but I'll call you off. The same one. <laughs> we got a James K. back on our board at Chambers, so we just uh, get what companies are. Uh, we just came out and Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Columbus, Indiana. Yeah. He's been there quite a while. Yeah, he gets up there and do some stuff right there and start <laughs> disclaimer. <laughs> He just came on the board yesterday yeah, when we asked him. I called on that back in the business. So he just said, uh, he's just getting back. He's just saying who he's not. He's just saying who he is. Why? Well, you put a white on there. Yeah, that's right. 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 Yeah, that's right.
sector, from associations such as the Chamber of Commerce and other uh, representatives of important sectors of the economy. It's been our privilege and pleasure to have lunch together and to talk about the package just negotiated uh, between the White House and Congress in an effort to reduce the deficit and to avoid a sequester. It's been a good conversation and uh, I think there's a general consensus that uh, uh, we were entitled to high mark for having taken this initiative and we're fortunate that we were able to produce a result. They each have their own views on uh, the various aspects of it and I, I'm sure they would like very much to discuss this with well, well, I want to thank you all for coming today, especially on such short notice. I thought that it was important quickly to begin a series of meetings with a wide range of opinion leaders to tell you what is in and what is not in our agreement on the budget. And I know that you've received a rather detailed assessment from Howard and Jim Baker and Jim Miller. Let me mention three things about this agreement that I believe are important to reiterate. As I said on Friday, this agreement must not be the last word on deficit reduction. This is a good first step, a basic framework to work within for this year and next. We can and should do more. Second, let me share with you the personal assurances that I have from the congressional leaders as well as the chairman of the tax writing committees that they have committed to hold the level of taxes to no more than the $9 billion this year and the $14 billion next. They've also committed to leave our tax reform intact. There will be no change in marginal rates or indexing. And there will also be no new broad waste base taxes such as a sales tax or new excise taxes. I know that you're concerned about provisions I haven't mentioned, like taxing mergers and acquisitions. Just let me say that this agreement does not preclude us from vetoing any or all of the legislation that comes out of this agreement. And I will veto any bad tax bill. Finally, I believe, and I think that you will agree that this package is better and the automatic sequester under the Graham Rudman Hollings law. It prevents the otherwise indiscriminate across the board cuts of a sequester, especially those that would cripple our national defense. And it provides for more reforms in entitlement programs, reforms that will provide lasting reductions. It calls for the imposition of over a billion dollars in user fees to advance my policy of requiring people to pay for the services they receive. And perhaps most importantly, it shows that the executive and the Congress can come together to produce a credible package rather than to have to rely on the autopilot approach of Grand Reverend Hollings. I think that's what the American people are looking for, the ability of this government to make choices. And now, John, I'd like to call on you, John Phelan, to tell us how you think the markets here in the world will react and reform the foreseeable future. I would merely echo what others have said, Mr. President, that uh, I think one of the, the important things about uh, uh, this agreement and this accord is not that it's an end, but it's a beginning. Uh, as you said, it must continue in some way. It's much better than sequester. I think this at least sends a message both domestically, but more importantly abroad, uh, that in this country, the, the, the leadership in this country is willing to sit down uh, to work on an agreement, uh, realize the seriousness of it. And I think that um, a lot of people don't understand the impact of interest rates uh, that all of this has had, not only on our, our domestic markets, but overseas as well. 
And I think without a, a voluntary agreement like this, um, that would certainly be viewed in foreign markets and by foreign governments as an extremely serious situation in which uh, it was not possible to get an agreement in this country. And I think that would be to the long-term detrimental interests of this country and the people in this country. So it certainly is a beginning and a good thing. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, could you set the record straight, sir, as to whether you would consider any uh, pardons in the Iran-Contra affair before Mr. Walsh's investigation is over? This is a subject I have not and will not discuss this time. I Until what point, Mr. President? Uh, just let's say sometime in the future. <laughs> would you address the Iran-Contra report, sir? You have not uh, commented on that for now almost a week. Well, maybe no comment is called. Thank Sir, you. why is that? After months of uh, investigations, you said that uh, when the report was finally in, uh, we would uh, hear a lot from you, but we wouldn't, you, you wouldn't be able to shut you up, I think, with your words. Well, maybe they labored and brought forth the mouse. <laughs> Let's go, please. Thank you. Thank you.